One curious feature of Jambudweep is that the Bhagavatam describes all of the Varshas, or regions, other than Bharata Varsha, as heavenly realms, where the inhabitants live for 10,000 years without suffering. This has led some scholars to suppose that Indians used to imagine foreign lands as celestial paradises. However, the Bhagavatam does refer to barbaric peoples outside India, such as Huns, Greeks, Turks, and Mongolians, who were hardly thought to live in paradise. One way around this is to suppose that Bharata Varsha includes the entire Earth globe, while the other eight Varshas refer to celestial realms outside the Earth. This is a common understanding in India, and it is illustrated by this 19th century South Indian diagram, where the Earth globe is identified with Bharat Varsha. But the simplest explanation of the heavenly features of Jambudri is that Bhu Mandala was intended to represent the realm of the demigods. Like the other interpretations we have considered, this one is based on a cluster of mutually consistent points in the cosmology of the Bhagavatam. The first point is that the demigods are portrayed as being so large that we are literally like ants in comparison with them. For example, this picture shows the size of Lord Shiva in relation to Europe, based on dimensions given in the Bhagavatam. This explains the enormous sizes attributed to mountains, trees, and other features in Jambudri. Although Jambudri refers to a region of this earth, it doubles as a realm of demigods of superhuman size. How can mere humans meet and interact with such gigantic beings? The answer is that travel from this earth to the celestial realm may involve a great expansion in size. Systematic changes in size are carried out using the Siddhis, or mystic powers, called Anima, size reduction, and Mahima, size expansion. According to the Bhagavatam, these powers are based on the transcendental form of Vishnu, who is larger than the universes, as Mahavishnu, and smaller than an atom, as the Supersoul. There are also Siddhis which enable one to take shortcuts across space. This is illustrated by a story from the Bhagavatam in which the mystic yogini Chitraleka abducts Aniruddha from his bed in Dwarka and transports him mystically to a distant city. In addition to moving from one place to another in ordinary space, the mystic cities enable one to travel in the all-pervading ether or to enter another continuum. A classical example of a parallel continuum is Krishna's transcendental realm of Vrindavan, which is said to be unlimitedly expansive. This transcendental realm is said to exist in parallel to the finite earthly Vrindavan in India. A story from about 500 years ago tells of how Dukhi Krishna Das found an ankle ornament belonging to Radharani that fell into this dimension from the transcendental Vrindavan. He subsequently met a gopi who came from that realm to retrieve the ornament. Later on, Dukhi Krishna Das, who is now known as Shaimananda, entered the same transcendental realm in meditation. Thus the transfer from one continuum to another depends on the traveler's state of consciousness. The Sanskrit literature abounds with stories of parallel worlds. For example, the Mahabharata tells the story of how Arjuna was abducted by the Naga princess Ulupi while bathing in the Ganges. Arjuna was pulled down into the kingdom of the Nagas, which exists in another dimension. The idea of parallel worlds linked by mystical travel explains how the worlds of the demigods and still higher beings are connected with our world. 